Here's a terrific outdoor project. A planter box that is fully adjustable. I can raise and lower the plants to any height I want. And the back side is a trellis. It'll allow vines to grow up inside and add an awful lot of impact. And when this copper pipe goes to patina, that real light greenish hue is just gonna add a lot of interest. This is a great project for your yard. It's easy to make. Let me show you how to do it. Working on any outdoor project, like a planter box, calls for a choice of material, and it's gonna be used outdoors. Depending upon where you live, it may be easy to get cedar, or redwood, or maybe treated wood. The area that we're at it makes it easier to get cypress, and that's what I'm using for this project. Like most hardwoods, most of them come full thickness. This one is almost one full inch thick, and I want to get it down to the material for this particular project, which is three quarter. To do that, I know that I'll have to go to the joiner, and then I'll have to go to the planer. I'm starting by flattening one face of that board. It takes a pass over the joiner, maybe two, and finally a pencil mark to ensure that the final face is dead flat. Now it's onto the thickness planer. I'll put the jointed side down and make multiple passes until I finally approach the three quarter inch thickness. I'll check each time just to make sure. The final step is back of the joiner. By placing one flat edge up against the face of the fence and putting pressure on the bed, I'll make one pass over the knives. Now using a pencil, I'll make one more pass and when the pencil mark's gone, we have a perfect 90 degree edge to the two flat faces. The planter box calls for four each front and back slats and eight side slats. They are all four and three eighths of an inch wide, so I'll cut those widths at the table saw. At the miter saw, I'm cutting the front and back slats and the side slats to size. Using a palm router and a 45 degree chamfer bit, I'm routing a chamfer on the top outside edge of six front and back slats and six side slats. Now I'm cutting the corner trim to size. And to do that, I need to know the height. So I've made eighth inch spacers, and I've taken four of these slats and put them together. Now I can measure the overall height here and cut these to size. Now I'm spreading exterior glue on the edge of one piece making sure that it's aligned with the second piece. I'm holding it together with clamps. This is the first one. I'll do the remaining three as well. This is the layout for the lower assembly. You'll notice that the sides are actually proud of the front and the back. They will be assembled with exterior glue and a couple of screws and squared up, normally using a square like this. The problem is, using one of these squares, I need a third hand. This is my third hand. It's called a squaring brace, and it works really well. And the way I'm going to use it is, I'll get those corners lined up the way I want them, like so. Put one clamp on this end, and then put one clamp here. This gives me full access now to put my screws and glue on there. Check the link below if you'd like to make one. Let me take this apart. Let's put some glue on and finish that joint. Now I've repeated the same glue and screw process on each of the three remaining sides. And by using this squaring brace, I know that it's square. But there's a way to check this another way, just to kind of see. If I take a tape measure and I measure diagonally like this, outside to outside is 44 and a half. And doing the same thing this way also shows 44 and a half. 
So I've checked the square of this two ways. One is the old fashioned angles and the other is using this jig. Works great, so you can be pretty comfortable. This will work for you. To attach the corner trim, I make sure that the long grain faces both the front and back of the frame. Now using a pencil mark to determine about how high the glue will go, I'll add glue and a screw to each side to attach the sides into the trim. And now I will repeat that process for the other three corners. With the corner trim in place, it makes it easy to set each layer of slats. What we'll do is set a shim on each end and press the end slats in first. They're held in place with a single screw and glue. Then the long pieces front and back are added exactly the same way. Once the second row is in, it's easy to add the third and finally the fourth. The only difference in the fourth is that the top edges there do not have a chamfer. There's something satisfying about putting that last screw in there. The other thing is, if you remember, we use shims between each one of these little slats to judge the length of this corner. And it turns out that using those again to put it together made it perfectly even at the top. A nice job, looks really good. That completes the basic assembly of this planter, but we still need a bottom and a top. So let's start at the bottom. I cut the framing pieces of the table saw to width and cut them to length on the miter saw. Now using pocket holes, I'm gonna join each of the two short ends to the two long ends. This is a frame assembly for the bottom of the planter box. I attached each of the pieces with pocket holes and glue. And now I'm gonna use a router with a chamfer bit, much like I did earlier, to put a chamfer around all these edges. This will then be glued to the bottom of the planter box and the chamfer will be facing up. I'll do exactly the same thing, same process with the top edge. I'll chamfer that, but in that case, it's glued to the top of the box and the chamfer will be on the bottom edge. So we'll put glue on the edges here. This is our trim. And I just want to kind of feel my way around the corners here to make sure that it's sitting straight. Now I'll clean up any glue squeeze out as I see it. And once the glue dries, I can remove the clamps. I'll invert this whole thing and do exactly the same thing for the top. And again, when I put the top on, I wanna make sure that the bevel is facing down to match all the rest of them. While the glue is drying, it's a good time to start on the feet. To prepare the stock for the feet, I cut it wide at the table saw and a little bit long at the miter saw. While I'm laminating these, I know that the glue is gonna make the pieces move a bit. And as long as they're cut a little bit wider and longer, I can cut them down to size once the glue is dry. At the table saw, after removing the riving knife, I'm cutting a dado in the front and back pieces. Adjusting the fence allows me to cut a rabbit on the side pieces. Combining these two cuts will result in a 90 degree corner. It's important to know that these feet should actually be left and right. And we want to make sure that they're in that order. The front pieces here are the longer of those and they appear here and in the back. This is the joinery between them. Now what's left is to provide an arch on the front of these. So I know to make sure that they're left and right I'm just going to put an X in the spot where I know that the arches are going to be. It'll keep it from making mistakes. 
Now at the same time, if I do a one and a one, two and two and so on, and match the numbers, I know I'll have them back in that correct order. So let's show you how to make the arch on there. Now in cutting the arch, I'd like to add a little decorative element to it. So what I'm gonna do is make a mark at around an inch and a quarter from the end. This will leave a little tongue. And I'd like that to be a natural curve. So I'm just gonna use a finishing can like this. And I'm gonna set it at my mark and align the edge with the bail handle of this can, like so. and put a pencil mark. Now I'll take this to the bandsaw and cut that radius and use a sander to clean up the edges. Once I've done that, I'll use this as a template to mark all seven of the remaining pieces. I'm applying glue to all of the surfaces and then using a clamp pulling them together. It's time to place the feet at the bottom of this cabinet. So these are the four. Again, I'm following my number system and put each one of them in a corner and I'm just going to apply a little bit of glue and clamp them down. And again, making sure that the long grain here is running parallel to the long face of the front. This is the material for the drip frame slats. These are three inches wide and I'm going to cut them to width on the table saw. Once that's done, I'll cut them to length on the miter saw. I measured in two and a quarter inches on each end of the side slats and then equally spaced four long slats. Those are attached with glue and screws. The drip frame adds an awful lot of functionality to this planter box. You can raise it at whatever level you want to match the plants that you've got in here. It kind of finishes off the construction of this planter box. You could stop right here and have a beautiful planter box, but for climbing plants, I want to add a trellis. Here's how. I'm cutting up the trellis pieces. Those include the trellis dividers and trellis top. I'm also going to cut the trellis uprights and rails, but I'm cutting those a little bit wide because they have to be laminated. Whenever I'm laminating pieces, I like to do that on a known flat surface, such as this workbench top. The resulting glue up will be as straight as the top. After laminating, I'll cut them to width on the table saw and cut them to length on the miter saw. This is the trellis upright, and this is the rail, goes horizontally. The idea is to inset this rail onto the trellis upright. And to do that, I'm just gonna remove material here and from here, so that when the two go together, they look like this. It's called half laps, it's done at the table saw. I'm gonna start in the upright. I'm using a test block that's half the thickness of the upright and the width of the rail to lay out the dale. After I've made the first cut, I'll use that test block to gauge how wide the second one will be. I'm gonna make that a little bit tight and continue to adjust the fence until I get the fit exactly the way I want it. I'm using that same test block to set the width of the half lap on the rail. The height will be the same as I originally used to do the dale. Again, I'll make all those passes and then come back and make them again just to make sure that the fit is exactly the way I want it. I'm marking the center of the upright that's gonna hold the eight pieces of copper pipe. The bit I'm using needs to go in a half an inch, so I put a piece of tape with a little tag on the end at a half an inch. Now using a hand drill and making sure I am plumb to the drill, I press it in until I see that the tape has pushed off the sawdust which means the hole is now a half an inch deep. I'll drill all those holes for both uprights. To do the layout for the dividers, I've used a square to make sure that they're all lined up on one edge, and then a couple of clamps to hold it in place. I'm using a square to mark the center line of each one of those dividers, and I'll use that same 15 16 inch bit on a hand drill to do a through hole. I'm clamping those dividers to a piece of scrap. 
so as the drill bit exits a hole, it won't break out the backside. I'll use the same setup to drill all those holes in all the dividers. Each one of these dividers gets a point at the end. I've set up my table saw blade to 45 degrees, and using a scrap block, I cut one side, then flip it and cut the other. The result is a perfect 45. I'm making those cuts on both ends of all the dividers. It's time to cut the copper pipe. I need eight of these, and you can easily do it with a hacksaw like this, but I'm gonna suggest that if you have one using a tubing cutter. The reason is it's much easier to cut the pipe that way, and the result at the end is a nice round and square edge. It'll make it much easier to fit all of these in the openings. Once I've cut all the pipe, I'm gonna take this lettering off that you see on the front here with a little bit of acetone. It wipes off real quickly. Shiny finish. Now I've assembled the copper pipe into the uprights and then through all the dividers. So now I'm gonna attach the rails. So these fit on either side. They're glued into the dados that we made a little bit earlier and they will hold this whole frame together. With the trellis top cut to size, I used a 45 degree chamfer bit around all the edges on the bottom. I centered it on the trellis uprights and then attached it with glue and screws. I set the trellis frame up against the back of the planter box, which gave me a good indication as to where to put my marking lines. I'm now going to use a jigsaw and cut these out, and the trellis will fit right up against the back of the box. All I need now is to put in a couple of screws to hold everything together. Now all that's left is moving our dividers a little bit and making the space look evenly divided. Pretty and functional.